So it's finally official. Finally got the results of the biopsy and ironically enough, I'm not as upset or freaked out as I thought I would be. Because as you probably guessed by now, I officially have cancer now. And I guess, you know, over the last two to three weeks, like I've had time to process everything and you know, I know that I'm going to do what I have to do to get better and I'm not going to give up and this is exactly what I need to grow as a person. But yeah, I was still expecting it to hit me harder than this. So maybe it just hasn't quite sunk in yet because I just got back from the hospital. I'm waiting for my girlfriend to get home so we can talk about everything because, you know, she wanted me to wait till she was home to tell her that way, you know, if ever it's bad news, she won't be, you know, in public crying and stuff. So technically I haven't told anyone yet. And, you know, I'm just reading the documentation that the doctors gave me because unlike we thought it was, it's not lung cancer. It's something very, very, very rare. It's something called alveolar soft part sarcoma, which is a type of cancer. And I'm just reading through and they say that this type of cancer accounts for 0.2 to 1% of all soft tissue sarcomas, which in turn account for 1% of all cancers. So literally my odds of getting this type of cancer are 0.00002 to 0.0001%. I, I haven't done the math yet on what my odds of getting that as a human being period are, but I'm assuming much lower than that. Cause I mean, I don't know what's the percentage of people who have cancer, maybe like what, 5%? So what's like 5% of, you know, 0.001, I, I don't know. I haven't done the math, but yeah. So yeah, I just need to finish reading about that. And I have a list of questions to ask the oncologist that the doctor gave me to make sure they have all the information when I go see him. And you know, they're, they put a request in the system. So someone's going to call me within the next two weeks to book an appointment with an oncologist. And then he's going to be able to give me a better idea of exactly, you know, what to expect, what are the suggested treatments, what are my odds, all those things. <clears throat> But yeah, at this point, it's, I mean, <coughs> <coughs> I want to say it's not looking good simply because, you know, they told me it's stage four cancer, which is the worst kind. Um, but I am pretty young and aside from this, pretty healthy and there's no fucking way this is going to kill me. So that's probably not why, that's probably why I'm not that upset or maybe just hadn't sunk in yet. So yeah, I just like haven't told anyone I want to tell my girlfriend I want her to be the first just because, you know, she's been there throughout this entire thing and I know it's going to be. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And I know it's going to be more difficult on her than anyone else. So it's only right that I tell her first. I'm just recording this video because I had some time and I'm still kind of processing everything. Which is, I don't know, it's just ironic because when my family doctor called me, I think three weeks ago about at this point, to tell me like, hey, you know, we found masses in your lungs, could be cancer, that hit me so much harder than the confirmation of this is cancer and it's a very rare type of cancer and it's stage four. I, I don't know why, but I guess I just had time to process and deal with everything so at this point it's just a question of like all right cool now i know what it is let's figure out what to do with it now well, i mean what to do with it get rid of it of course but i mean you know what the solution is what well what are the different options because i don't want to limit myself simply to what the doctor says i want to explore all different kind of options and just figure out what is the best option for me what is the best option for my situation and just go from there and, you know, now that everything has been confirmed, today is going to be the process of reaching out to everyone to just either tell them like, hey, here's the update or tell them like, hey, by the way, I got cancer. 
what's new with you? <laughs> yeah, like the only person I haven't told that's that like I'm very close to is my dad simply because I already went to visit my mother, my sister, my uncle like a couple weeks ago and it's like, you know, I can't spend a couple days with them and not talk about this because that's what I'm going through. And my dad, I'm like, you know, there's no point in me telling him until I know for sure what it is. So I was just waiting. So he's the only one that I haven't told that something is going on. Most other people that I'm close to already know. So it's just going to be a question of updating them. So yeah, I'm, I'm honestly surprised by how little this is impacting me. Once again, maybe it just hasn't sunk in yet. But I'm really like, I'm okay with it. At least there's not that wondering of what is it of like waiting? When are they going to call me? What is it going to be? <clears throat> like there's still a lot of planning to do because, you know, my lease is expiring at the end of the month in like, what, three and a half weeks. So I was waiting till I got the results to get another place, but it's looking like, you know, it's going to take at least a couple months to go through the treatments or whatever I end up going. So it's like, it's probably not going to be possible for me to go back to Nicaragua for a while. So it's like, I need to find a place to live. And also they assigned us, well, I mean, they sent a request for a social worker to contact me to kind of explain to me what are the options available? Is there some sort of financing available? Because even though I'm looking for a job, like this treatment, whatever I end up choosing as a treatment, will probably going to require a lot of time and it's going to be very intense on my body. <clears throat> And I don't know how much I'll be able to work or how effective I'll be at it. And it's like, you know, I don't want to necessarily, <coughs> you know, put my employer through that of like, they hire me assuming that I'm fit as a fiddle. And then it's like, turns out, oh, well, you know, I have cancer, so I need to go do all these treatments and you need to give me time off and everything. It's like, I know it's not my fault. I don't need to suffer as a result of that, but I don't necessarily want to make them suffer as a result of it. So if there is some sort of, you know, government financial aid or something like that, that can support me during this time. And then I can see, you know, still keep looking for a job for, you know, three, four months down the line. Once I am able to work normally again, you know, that, that could be a good option. So, you know, a lot to consider, a lot to think about, a lot to figure out a lot of not awkward conversations, but a lot of conversations to have with a lot of people. The most difficult of which will obviously be with my girlfriend. But yeah, this this is the situation that I'm in right now. <coughs> so definitely not what I was hoping for, but kind of what I was expecting given everything that came before that. So now that I know everything, I'm going to be able to publish all the videos that I recorded up until now that I was waiting because, you know, I didn't tell everyone. So I just, I didn't want people like my dad to find out by watching a video. It's like, I wanted to tell him personally. So, you know, out of respect for that, I just recorded all the videos. And now that it's been confirmed, I'm going to upload all the videos and then continue making videos and just sharing the story and the progress as it goes along because I don't know. It's just, it's, it's who I am. Like I need to share this, even though like <coughs> this isn't a very public format of literally anyone on the web can watch this. This is my form of journaling. This is me writing in a diary, just processing my emotions and letting go of what I need to let go. Like, yes, I do speak to my friends and I do speak to my girlfriend and that does help. But to me, like this video journaling of like, I'm sharing my story. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not holding anything back. I'm releasing this into you, the universe. That is my way, like my ultimate way of processing things. And it's, it's, it's kind of like my form of therapy, if you will, which is ironic because, uh, one of the things I was asked is like, Hey, you know, how are you dealing with this mentally, emotionally? Like, do you need us to give you the number for a psychologist? So you can call them and, you know, have some, someone to talk to them. Like, you know, at the moment I'm doing okay, but you know, I'll take the number that way. If somewhere down the line, like I feel the need to, I can reach out to them. So, you know, that's another thing in the works. So <coughs> yeah, a lot of things going on and I'm just like, I, I know I sound normal and I sound kind of like, I'm not, not happy, but it's like, well, I'm a little happy. There is this sense of relief of like, you know, I finally know what it is. 
Now I can start planning. I can start doing what needs to be done to deal with this fucking thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, <coughs> the upside is they're like, there's no, you know, danger in you doing physical activity. Like they didn't, they couldn't tell me because like the people I dealt with were from the uh, pneumology department. So like, you know, everything to do with the chest. And they're like, you know, because this is so rare, we don't have many answers for you. You're going to get most of your answers from the oncologist. In fact, the person I was speaking to, she's like, I've been working here for 13 years. This is the first time I've ever encountered this type of cancer. So because of that, the answers that I have are very limited. But <coughs> yeah, at least, you know, they're like, there, there is no danger in you doing physical activity. Now it just comes down to me testing out like, you know, is running, is exercising going to help strengthen my body and make me better equipped to handle whatever stress, <coughs> whatever stress my body is going to go through when I heal from this? Or is it better to just conserve my energy for healing and not expend that energy on exercise and fitness and running? So not quite sure. That's one of the questions I'm going to ask the oncologist. But yeah, that's, that's about it. So give you an update whenever I have more information. Until then, whoever you are, wherever you are, please use this situation. Use my story as a reminder. Don't hold yourself back. Because you always feel like there's plenty of time left and then something like this can happen and it completely changes your life. And makes you realize, like, I don't know how long I have left. I need to enjoy every single moment. So, hopefully this can help remind you of that. So, thank you for watching. Thank you if you've been following my story. If you continue to follow my story. I honestly have no idea what's going to happen in the future. But I know I'm going to keep sharing it because that's just who I am. I really need to find a way to close these videos because every time at the end I'm like, I feel like I need like a closing note and I just never know what to say. I was like, eh. So let me just close the video by saying, eh.